Hi, I'm Sportster Paul. Today we're going to put together this Kian Butterfly Carb. First video, we gave you some tips and tricks. Second video, it's all about getting it apart and getting it clean as a whistle. Look at this thing. It's gorgeous. It, uh, between the Barrowman's Chem Dip Carb Cleaner and three trips to the Ultrasonic Cleaner, it's got like a beautiful polished look. The brass cleaned up everything. The, uh, the stuck float, or not stuck float, the float bowl was plugged. This passage right here was plugged in the float bowl. And I've thought about how there was so much paraffin junky gas residue down there. I don't think I, I, one bowl of gas evaporated wouldn't have done that. I have a petcock problem on that bike where the petcock slowly drips a little bit in over the months and maybe a half a tank of gas went into this float bowl and then evaporated off in the hot Florida uh, summer. And that's what clogged up this passage and caused all those problems. Nothing that Barrowman couldn't fix. So it's in beautiful shape. Look at the body. I told you about the trick for this black plastic fitting that they put in in the factory. They all leak. You got to drill them out. Uh, showed you that in the tips and tricks. Drill it out. Put in a brass fitting. They must have a really stubborn middle manager because the CV carb, which is 88 and later, I had a 96 uh, Sportster in California that I ran, and this is just an eBay carb. But look, see, they're cracking right there, right at the same spot. Do they never learn? Key and engineers are great. They're like a Honda affiliate, but they never learned about that. Uh, everything else is pretty much stock. Well, not quite. I have a little aught 80 screw into this hole. These are the detent holes for a little ball that pushes up on a spring for the choke. By putting an aught 80 screw there, short little guy, it keeps the, sh the choke from slapping shut. So that's modified. Uh, the last thing I did, this might be silly, took a pencil and I put it in the brass seat for the needle. And I just turned it a few times. And I figure it kind of burnishes the brass, any oxidation, cleans it up. Nothing too radical. I don't want to take a, a drill or a machining tool or anything down there. So we got that dialed in. So the body's in pretty good shape. <clears throat> the float bowl, nice and shiny. Still a little discolored on the bottom from that crappy gas, but not bad. So I told you in the earlier videos <clears throat> that there's a check valve in the bowl. Hear it? That's because it's a diaphragm pump. It needs an inlet valve and an outlet valve. Then there's, you can see it swedged in a little uh, uh, ball. They put, drop in the, the, the ball check, then another ball goes here and they swedge it in. The aluminum just wedge it all in there. Came out of the Barrowman's and the ultrasonic. It rattles too. I want to warn you, on, on a late model, 79 later, they did a trick, and I'll do a subsequent video to explain all that with all these six carbs I've got, show you the differences where they took the ball check, they didn't need it because they put a bleed hole in the passage. So not all of them, if, if your cap doesn't have this little detent ball, well, don't, don't go nuts trying to hear it rattle. It'll never rattle. But the float bowl might work. I recommend you do what I did. Fill it up with water, test it, see that it squirts, then take it all apart, clean it, dry it, and put it together for real. That's where we are now. So where do we start? Well, Things guys forget, and gals, these two little O-rings, you need those. This is a pump. It's got to be sealed. Get my 3M Muvo reading and safety glasses on. Oh, God, that's great. Now, these aren't exactly O-rings. They're more D-shaped uh, cross-section. So there's a flat side and a rounded side. Put the flat side down against that machined thing. They sit proud of the surface, as you'd expect. This one, okay, there's the flat. Go here. Oops. Now we got it. Okay, so that's pretty good. We got the two O-rings. Don't forget that, because you know they leak there. Then guys reef on the screws, thinking that'll tighten it. They gall out the screws. Big mess. So what next? Uh, the diaphragm. Here it is. This is the accelerator pump. It's a diaphragm pump little diaphragm. Note, it's got a ridge on the outside here that goes in this groove on the float bowl. It's smooth on the other side, so that goes down in this case. 
Then there's a spring that also comes in the rebuild kit. This is the valuable thing. Let me show you some of these old. This was a, a sentimental one that I'm keeping for, for old news sake. Yeah, for old times sake. But they get the, the ones that I had in my stash that aren't in these experimental carbs, they're in pretty bad shape. Interestingly, some that look worse like this are actually a little more flexible. They're all stiff. This one, oh my gosh. See, I, I've played with it a little. Hear that cracking? That's the rubber cracking away from like a fiber inside. I hope you can see that. It's hollow, this one shot, as well as the other one. This one, oh, really stiff and kind of cupped, like a Belleville washer, where, you know, this would not be a happy camper. At least it's cupped in, in the spring down so that you know, you might get some delivery, but it's worth the $29, the custom Chrome dealer. Don't do what I did. Buy one for 10 on eBay. It doesn't explicitly say in a bullet point on the cover, uh, Viton, because you want Viton rubber. It resists the alcohol, doesn't swell. We'll see uh, that problem a little later. And the rebuild kit comes with a new spring. Not ultra necessary. Then you can put the cap on like that. Just get it close. Now the screws... Here are the factory screws. They have a captivated lock washer. They got a tiny little head. You can see a here where the guy's reef on them. It's actually mushed that over. Sometimes it mushes over so bad you, ca you can't get the screw out. It squished it around the, the uh, threads of the screw. So you don't need that. The problem with uh, captivated lock washers, I worked at a military contractor years ago. I saw the data that the military takes on lock washers. After five tightenings and loosenings, they're useless. They don't, they're, you might as well not have one. So you need a brand new, fresh lock washer every single time. So what I did, I went to Mr. Metric, in, or not Mr. Metric, actually, these are Olander, another fastener house. And I got <clears throat> M4, can you see this, I guess? M4 by 12 millimeter screws. What's nice about these is they have a bigger head. And I like that because it kind of spreads it out. But, and they're stainless, stainless steel, cool guy stuff. So stainless screws, stainless flat washers. And I didn't think, I, I'm pretty sure I didn't get stainless uh, lock washers because I want them spring steel. I want them to work better than, than stainless. But brand new lock washers. The other thing I do is the long screw that we're going to hook the float bowl in. This is a factory one. You got to go to the Harley dealer and pay big dollars to get a bunch of new ones. I don't know, dollar, two dollars each. And you can just see how this old one's all galled out. The head's all galled out. But the, uh, the brand new one, it's nice. I think I've mentioned I use Antises on everything. Vance Brees, the racer and now gyroplane pilot. He swears that Antises actually sticks things together a little, like Loctite. It, it won't get everything apart. And then everything is easier to take apart. So I've already got some anesthesia in all of these. So let's get organized. Find my number two Phillips here. Flip bowl's ready to go on. Okay, brand new lock washer, anesthesia, M4 by 12 screw. There's two short ones and one long one here. The long one's for the float bowl itself. And on it goes. Oh, I love when stuff fits. And on this one goes. They're slippery from that anesthes, so I will. And then, because you learn with a Harley, loose assemble everything, put the long screw through the hole just to make sure that it's lined up and you can, you can snug this one. You can snug that one. Okay, we'll give it another pop. And this came out. That's a good sign. You can take the operating rod now for the diaphragm pump, for the accelerator pump. You can stick it where it goes. Oh, it even made some noise for my testing with water. It just feels good. It pops right up. That, that, that rub, brand new rubber, that custom chrome, it's nice and springy. And oh, that's going to be a happy carb. So float bowl, I warned you about this. Warned you about the cracked the uh, body. So now we can start on the body. Um, 
I like to put the mixture tube in first. This is where the air and the gas mixes in this larger main jet passage. Froths all up, then it goes into the intermediate and up into the intermediate circuit and, and idle circuit. That's why this is better than appendix. It's got an intermediate circuit. So that just drops in, I guess. Uh, haha. I should point out, pointy end, you know, goes like, goes in like that. Main jet. This is a 165 main jet. I've been getting leaner on the main jets as I get older. I uh, use them like 180s or 185s, and I've learned really they can be pretty lean. Uh, main jet is wide open. You got to go on the freeway, check the plugs. It's quite involved to, to test. Okay, the intermediate jet is next. This one's an 88. Now the other th thing on the intermediate is I've been getting fatter and fatter, bigger and bigger. I used to have 65, 75s. I'm up to 88s now. They seem on an Iron Sportster. I, I have like funky exhausts, but it seems to make it happy. So the, the small straight slot go in there. It doesn't take too long. It finds the slot. You get a feel. Don't go crazy. Not too tight. Then uh, one of the tricks, this little rubber plug. They're in the rebuild kit. Make sure you remember to put that rubber plug where the intermediate it has to have that or the car will never run right. So we got that ready. We burnished out our seat. We're ready for the... Oh, I love when stuff sticks together. All right, I'm going to need these glasses because there's two needles in the rebuild kit because Customs Chrome is cool people. One needle, it must be later, it's got a little nib on it that's spring-loaded. That tiny little nib pushes up on the float and, you know, that's what... Uh, like this, the needle's like this. So the, the nib goes here. I don't know, I, I showed you all those pictures in, in the tips and tricks of, of the dent you get. You get a big, from where, you get a big dent here. These aren't available anymore. So you get a big dent here and that can hang things up. You know, it makes that pivot. I figure, well, it's fancy, it's more expensive. Maybe we'll do without it. We'll use the same needle that I've found in them when I take them apart, which is just a plain, smooth butt end here that presses. So that goes on. Then you need the rod that uh, it pivots on. That goes like that. And you can turn it and you can bring the carb and it'll just drop in if life is treating you good that day. So it's loose. And now you know, it's delicate because it's got that float. You don't want to bash it. You find this little screw here that is uh, uh, countersunk. That's what they use. They only use one. I don't know if that's some clever cost reduction or what. Now you get a number one Phillips, the smaller Phillips. That goes here. The, the countersink helps lead it in and line it up. And it goes... And as you tighten it, you what I don't like is this thing is always a little binding. So that's okay. <clears throat> so you've got that. Float works now. The float level is a critical adjustment. They give you measurements and all that. They ignore all that stuff. It's like just you want it flat. Now they make it tough on you because the surface of the float that's, that's against the flange, it would be so perfect you could just line up. They put a step in it, which makes your life miserable. But you can kind of look, this one's a little low. Now, now, when I say low, I mean in this position, meaning it's really a little high, which means the bowl might fill too much and you'll get overflow through the tube. So turn this way. I want to bring it up, get your straight slot. You can reach in here and pry the tab down. That's pretty good. Now, by the same token, if you want the float to go the other way, if it's sitting... <clears throat> too high in this position, too low and installed on the bike. <clears throat> you don't take your thumb and just bash the float down because then you're smashing the seat of the needle. You hold it up and you get a screwdriver in there. <clears throat> you go under the, the little metal tab and bend it up that way. There's another tab on this right here and that controls how far it goes up before it stops. You don't want the float falling so far that it kind of jams against something and I sure wouldn't want it 
up against up against the bottom of the bowl because then all that paraffin and tar I'd have been in a real mess. I'd have gas leaking out of it. So that's that. <clears throat> now after a lot of misery <laughs> and plenty of practice. I can tell you the next challenge. Uh, Custom Chrome, in addition to giving you two needles, because they're cool folks there, they give you a whole bunch of float bowl gaskets. They give you three different ones. Here's the, here's the comparison. Let's see if I can get them in the middle of the screen. Here we go. They're also this O-ring. That's meant to go here. I never use it. I figure it's just something to get pinched and cause an air leak and blow up your bike. I just use the, they give you two extra paper gaskets. I think if you have that fiber spacer, you're supposed to use these. I like this one. It's a little waxier. It seems like it would seal against this nice aluminum better. But the float bowl gaskets, oh, I did smash this a little. Got to be careful. Usually I'm not making a video when I'm rebuilding carbs. Perfect. Life is good. All right. So this is the original one, separate for for this thing, a little O-ring over that, big O-ring here. Those are fine. You hang on to it. This must be some late model thing where they had a, after a while, they, they put on a, a black plastic thing here. So when you turn on the choke, it bumped the throttle because I guess people can't modulate their throttle. Yeah, it's still in good shape. Shouldn't handle this thing that much. So I don't know what all these extra holes are. It must be a really late model thing. That goes in the garbage. And then here's the problem. Here's Because this was an $11 kit I got off of eBay and God knows. See how it's too small? The O-ring isn't staying in the channel. That's really bad news because, you know, you'll see the goofy way you got to put the float on with the rod hanging down. And all that does is end up with a pinched thing. And that's why these, these morons go and over tighten and gall out the heads of the screws because they think they can tighten it and make it stop leaking when really the O-ring's gone in like that. And it's pinched in a couple places. Well, you fix that. Shouldn't have so much trouble getting this out. It's not fitting. Well, you fix that. Man's best friend, lithium grease, white lithium grease. Gasoline dissolves it, so I don't think it's that serious to use it. So, oops, that was a mistake. Uh, life's, life goes on. Come on, there we go. And get some lithium grease all the way up here. Get it out of my way. Get this one up. Kind of go around. Get with you. All right. And that was a little too generous. So you can clean it up. Like I say, I'm pretty sure the gas just dissolves it. And there's not a lot of fibrous material in lithium grease, so it doesn't harm the engine. Clean it up a little. Now, check this out. Put on your O ring there. And now, as you get it started, you bury it in that grease. And it's messy, no, no question about it. But you'll notice the O-ring staying where it's supposed to stay. It's not popping out like it was a few seconds ago. So I'll keep cleaning. I'm not saying you should dump the lithium grease in the... Uh, so this is happy. This is happy. Now comes the coordination test. There's always something goofy. Check the float again. Looks great. Sounds great. Oh, here's a little trick I forgot. You can blow in it. See, no, it doesn't pass. And then as I lift it up and it opens, then you should hear the air. Nice, we got these mics here. You can hear it. All right, so here's the coordination test. There's always something goofy. Floats hanging. It's not down too far. It's in the right position. It seems to work. The accelerator pump rod goes in this long slot here from behind. Got to do it this way because it's misery. You got to do it as you put it together. I, I push this rubber boot up 
It just seems to help things being in that position. And you hold it like that. <clears throat> this brass part of the float is going to go up in this hole right up here in this corner. So you kind of eyeball it and you go down, careful not to mash that float. Bend it. Could do neurosurgery or you could work on sportsters. Take your choice. Ah, there. And if we have some decent light. Yeah, you can see the end of the rod through the slot. It didn't go anywhere. And you can just feel when they're right. There's just something about like the, the bowl makes a thwump or a kind of feel when it's not pinching the O-ring. Closes up. You can kind of look. It's not dead flush because the O-ring is an O-ring. But it's, it's just right. And, and you can tell that and you can feel it. And it's worth getting some lithium grease to give you that confidence. Now we got same thing, uh, brand new lock washers, M412 stainless steel screws, stainless steel flat washers. Number two Phillips. Come in here. Get that one a little snug. Uh, I like to go back here. Get this one a little snug. Uh, get this one here. Uh, that's the third one. And the fourth one's the long one that I showed you that I bought brand new at the Harley dealer. Where'd that go? Here. It's got its captive lock washer. You got to live with that. But a little anesthesia's never hurt anything. So. I don't put anesthesia on the jets or anything. The gas in there, I'm pretty sure, just wash. It's aluminum particles and oil. That feels pretty good, snugging up, snugging up. Like the wheels on your car, you do them in rotations. And pulls down, heaves up. That feels good. See, these smaller heads are also easier to gall out. Just slip there. Doesn't help that they're a little slippery from anises. That feels good. Which one haven't I done? This one, I don't think. Yeah. Don't have to reef them, but you can feel them snug up. Okay, so we're happy. That's working out. <clears throat> Next, well, the idle speed screw. That goes on this side here. And all it does is you screw it down as it cracks the plate. I got this thing so clean it actually cracks when it opens. But you're going to screw it down a little bit. Anesthes on this and anesthes where the spring goes because when, when you're at a stoplight and you're trying to adjust the idle, you don't need all this binding up. You'd like to do it with your fingers if you can. Dry fingers, hopefully. And you can see it <coughs> there. You can kind of watch it crack the plate open. See, now it's not wedging the plate into the throat. It's actually stopping against this screw. Uh, I'll leave it like that. Next thing is the idle mixture adjustment. This is rich lean as it sits idling. <clears throat> so you, between the two of them, you get the bike so you can at least try this. You got to get it under the, the uh, advanced curve so that it, it starts loping and idling like a Harley's supposed to. So this thing, same thing, a little anesthes. I'm not going to put Teflon tape like I talked. I'm not going to put silicon, silicone here. Uh, we're just going to count that it's still sealing. Oh, that's that trick. You take your finger and you can feel that needle actually come through the little hole down here. R idiots reef on them so hard for some reason I don't understand. They'll actually break out a little chunk of aluminum. The carbs ruined that. You got, you got nothing going then. So this one, and then if you're really gentle, neurosurgeon, ah, it just tightened up. Then half a turn open. A full turn open. Let's try that because it's easy to remember. I thought it was a turn and a half, but that's a place to start. Hopefully, between the accelerator pump, you get the get the bike warmed up. It'll do okay. I should have warned you. There's a short stubby screw, shorter than the than the five other ones. That goes up here to hold the choke bracket. Now I've smashed my choke bracket flat because I did a little coat hanger chopper kind of thing. I'm going to a conventional 
choke cable. Got that from J&P Cycle. It's on the way any day. So I'm going to bend this back to a little curly Q cup where it sits that outer sheath of the choke cable sets. Meanwhile, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Take this, get our number two Phillips. There we go. Oops. And don't cross thread stuff. Get a feel for it. Little there's anises on this too. It's got a captivated lock washer, but that's life. So that's that. Next we're gonna, like I say, I like this waxier one. I don't put the O-ring in. The theory, the reason I don't like an O-ring metal to metal is because that brings more heat out of the engine into the carb, heats up the gas. I've never had vapor lock, but still. This, I mean, I could see even using multiple ones to, to give you a more thermal resistance or uh, let's not go crazy, right? And then since we're getting ready to put this on the bike uh, in a little bit, two flat washers. Two brand new lock washers, Home Depot, Orchard Supply, you name it. Here are the new lock washers. Here's one well, here, let's just do one. Here's the old one. Now you tell me which is going to look better, right? Which is going to work better. This one still has a big offset and a spring to it. This old one goes in the rubbish. So this goes next. Might as well keep things put. So then start the nuts on it. There'll be anises on this when I mount it on the bike. And then the, the final thing from the rebuild kit is the air cleaner cover gasket. They are not symmetrical. They go on, that's the wrong way. See how it's not fitting? This hole is for the, this is the vent for the float bowl. Flip it over and suddenly you'll find it fits. So another little trick. So there you go. A little other than some anti-seas uh, damage to make the video. Key and butterfly carb, hopefully working, won't leak, won't accelerator pump will work properly. Uh, I'm really, really went the whole hog on this one, no pun intended. So we'll see how it works. I'll let you know if the, uh, if the bike starts up and then we'll do that other follow on video, just a little extra if you're really into this stuff where I take all of these and I hooked up a clear tube like I did in the beginning and squirt, squirt, squirt and see how much accelerator. I've learned a whole bunch of stuff about that. This one works great with that new custom Chrome rebuild kit. So thank you very much. Signing off now. We'll see you next time. Thank you.